Welcome to another edition of the Go Knows Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Uh, coming off the heels of a big win against Miami, um, you know, a game that really wasn't competitive. Um, I really felt like, like I said in the instant reaction, I thought it was going to be a more competitive game. Generally, those games are more competitive. Um, Miami has talent. I'm just not sure, you know, what was going on down there, but. I mean, at any rate, I don't – like I said before, I think if you have a, at least a halfway decent Miami team, they're able to corral some of the talent that comes out of there. And, you know, I would rather that talent go to Miami than Georgia or Alabama or Clemson or Ohio State. I would rather that talent stay in Miami, you know, just – because I don't want to see those other programs have pipelines to, you know, I think if we're competing with Miami for talent, we got a better chance of getting those players versus um, going against, you know, those other top schools. But, I mean, at any rate, you know, we throttled them. I'm happy. I'm ecstatic. And um, it's on to Syracuse. Um, but, I mean, we're bowl eligible for the first time since, uh, what, 2020, 2020, January 2020. We played in the Sun Bowl is what I want to say. And, uh, you know, we're it's not a lot of players remaining from that team. Not a lot. I mean, um I, I'm, you know, I'm starting to think that maybe we can finish five and zero, four and one. I think, you know, Syracuse is on the three game skid, and you just you got Louisiana and you got Florida. Florida is no slouch. You know, I know they're down in terms of their record, but. You know, they've got talent on that team, and they beat us last year. So, um, you know, that's not going to be a walk in the park. Um, that's going to be a big game. Um, so I would uh, – I'm really anxious to see how Florida State is going to play over these last three games. I think, you know, if you can finish the season 9-3, and three, I mean, open up the floodgates. The talent is coming. Um, I think a lot of the talent in the state of Florida, you know, is reluctant to come to Florida State because they, you know, they didn't feel like Norvell knew what he was doing. But I think, you know, as he's gotten talent offensively and defensively, it's come together. So if they can, you know, finish out this season and, you know, win nine, ten games, I mean, it would be tremendous. It would be a tremendous lift for the team, the fan base, everything, the boosters, the school, everything. And, um, you know, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. I, You know, thank God for Trey Benson. I mean, just a one-man battering ram. I, for my money, he's the starting running back. I don't – I whenever – Trayshawn Ward is healthy. I don't think you give it back to him. I think, you know, and, you know, Miami has a good front seven, so we're not going to sit here and say that they're lacking talent on defense. They've got a really good front seven. And, you know, the offensive line played a heck of a game. They had Darius Washington at left tackle, and he actually played pretty decent. Um, 
if I I want to say I saw Darius Washington out there, number 76 at right tackle. I could be wrong. I mean, but I, I think I saw him out there. Um, or maybe that was turn time. I have to go back and look at the tape, but I could have swore they had Darius Washington out there at right tackle. But, I mean, I could bleak. You know, sometimes when I'm watching a game, I see stuff that's not really there. So I could be completely off base with that. But I could have swore I'd seen him out there right tackle. But whoever was playing right tackle had a good game. Um, the whole offensive line had a good game. Um, so I, you know, Syracuse out of these last five games, Syracuse and Florida scared scared me. But with... Syracuse, um, you know, basically coming back to earth after their 6-0 and start. I mean, I think, I think beating them is very doable. Um, 8 o'clock kick, um, number 34 for Syracuse is a tremendous running back. Their quarterback is dual threat. Um, their defense is very confusing with the three three five. Um so I mean, you're just gonna have to come out and run the football. It's pretty much what you're gonna have to do. You know, and I like the fact that Mike Novell comes out and tries to establish the run early in these games and if you're running the ball effectively I think you can get them out of that that 335 and and have them put more people in the box then you're able to do your play action and all that stuff I mean the play calling has the offensive play calling has improved tremendously over the last two games um, I, I don't know if that's because you're playing playing inferior opponents. I think that might be the case. Um, but at any rate, you know, I'm just happy that, hey, man, at least we at the end of the season, we get to play one more game. I hope I'm hoping it's the uh, the mayonnaise bowl in Charlotte, you know, my hometown so I can actually go see them. So. Um, you know, this podcast, I really don't focus on recruiting a lot. Um, cause you just never know what a player is going to be like, you know, they'll hype up this, the cornerback from Lakeland, Florida, uh, Carmani McLean or whatever his name, he's the number one corner. He might not, he might go to Miami and. He might not do nothing. The same thing with uh the receiver we got, Hakeem Williams, whatever his name is. He might come to Florida State. He might not be nothing special. You know, you just got to get him on campus, coach him up, train him up, and see what happens. Because, I mean, it's, it's so many players that have come through this university, this football team that were just – Man, I mean, Lorenzo Booker, Fred Rouse, um, uh, Nick Maddox. I mean, just all world high school players um, that just didn't do anything. Um, I'm trying to think of the the linebacker from Miami that was like five star all world that we had got, and he didn't do nothing when he got. I mean, so you just never know how a player is going to acclimate when they come to to play college football. So, you know, and I, I'm saying this because I'm getting, you know, people emailing me saying you need you know you need to talk about more about recruiting and blah blah blah. This this is not a recruiting type podcast. Now, when when the, when the guys are signed, sealed, and delivered, I'll say, hey, I think this guy can be special, or you know. But as far as giving you a a tracker, I, I can't do that. I'm just gonna. And if I was doing it, 
I would just be on the internet regurgitating some something somebody else said. Because I don't have any inside knowledge or, um, you know, whatever to get that information. Um, you know, last year I was on Julian Armel. I said if we could get him, you know, he's the type of offensive lineman that we need. And we got him. Um, I think now, I mean, you need pass rushers. You need defensive tackles. You know, it has to be an emphasis on that. You have to continue the growth on the defensive line and the offensive line if you're going to, you know, be competitive year after year. Um, and, um, you know, that's that's the name of the game. You know, you look at the Georgia Bulldogs. I mean, their offensive line is crazy. Their offensive line is crazy, man. Like, those guys, I mean... They look like they lift weights, you know, two, three times a day, year-round. They dominated Tennessee. I thought Tennessee was going to put up a better fight than that. But, I mean, Georgia Georgia is just going to have a walk-in to the playoff because it looks like LSU is going to be the SEC West representative and – I think I think LSU, I think Georgia runs rough shot over LSU, and you know, and I say all of that to say that Georgia, right now in terms of offensive line, if you're Florida State, that's who you want to try to emulate. That's where we want to be, you know. They don't have the greatest defense in the world, but they still get talent. Um, you know, I would just, like I said, if we can win out, I think I think next season is going to be very special if you can bring this group back. I know you got some five- and six-year seniors on this team, but I think if you can bring most of this team back, we we could be special next season. I'm talking maybe ACC championship special. Um, but you just you just you know you just don't know guys' situations in terms of money. So, mm, I think one more year would help Jordan Travis for sure. Um. I think he's improved tremendously. I think he's made that leap. But I think one more year he could potentially be, you know, a top 10 pick. If he can get one more year to master that offense and put his skills on display, I think the sky's the limit. Um, to to beat Syracuse, apparently all you got to do is run the football. And that's that plays right into our will wheelhouse. Admittedly, I was one of those fans <clears throat> that was skeptical about the uh, Mike Norvell hiring, and uh, you know I'm not ashamed to admit that. I'm not gonna try to uh, you know switch it up because he's had some success this season. Um, I think he has uh, done a tremendous job with the roster. I've said that many times. Um, I think uh, <clears throat> the future is bright. I think that um, you can't rest on, you know, what you've accomplished so far and what you could potentially accomplish over the last three games. I think that as aggressive as you were the last two years, you know, you need to go times 10 in this next offseason to try to, you know, I think that the first step was to get bowl eligible 
The second step to me is winning the ACC championship. I think that has to be the next step. And then after that, you know, it's top five competing for national championships. Um, Of course, you have to acquire the talent, um, offensive and defensive line especially. Uh, I think we can do that. I think you got a tremendous um, offensive line coach and recruiter in Alex Atkins. Um, You got a tremendous DB coach uh, that can recruit. Um, We all know that Odell Higgins can recruit. Um, So for me, you know, it's just you got to go after these guys. Um, You know, I I just think that, you know, with Alabama coming back to earth this season, I think it's there for the taking. Um, Of course, you know, you say that and they'll probably end up with the number one recruiting class. Uh, We've seen this movie before where they've had a down year, quote unquote, and then they just next year is just, you know, uh, jailbreak, you know, and um, typical, you know, undefeated national championship Alabama team. But, you know, I think we can get back in the national championship conversation if we can acquire, you know, elite talent on the offensive and defensive lines. I think uh, it would behoove Jordan Travis to stay for his final season. I think that if he goes this year, he might be a fourth or fifth round pick. If he comes back and he has a better year, you could say a potential first round pick. Um, I mean, if you can get another year to hone your craft and improve your draft stock, why not do it? Um, you got a lot of seniors on that offensive line. So, You know, I don't know if you go out and hit the portal. I think you've acquired enough offensive line talent to not have to hit the portal as hard. I don't think next season that you have to go out and get a whole offensive line from the portal. I think you've acquired enough talent. But, you know, one or two guys wouldn't hurt. Um, You you definitely need some, some cover corners. And a playmaking safety wouldn't hurt. You know, I thought that uh, uh, Robinson was going to take the next step, but, you know, he he's leveled off a little bit. Um, he had a tremendous tackle on the quarterback in the Miami game. Um, but I, I think, you know, I think we can beat Syracuse. I think we can beat – Louisiana, I think Florida is going to be a very tough game. Again, you can't judge a team by their record. You you know, they've got talent. Um, you know, and you know it's going to be a a, a well fought game. So if if Flo- if Florida State's going to win that game, they're going to have to win it. They Florida's not going to give it to you. So, um I think the future is bright. I'm not going to sit here and say give Mike Norvell a contract extension because he might finish. It's a chance he might finish 6-6. Six and six. But, I mean, certainly if he finishes 9-3, and three, you know, I think you can re-sign him on the cheap. You know, I don't think you wait until he has a, a real, real breakout year and try to re-sign him then. I think you try to get him on the cheap. Um, but the, like I said in the instant reaction, I think the play calling has been a, a little bit more imaginative and a lot more creative over these last couple of games. Now I don't know if that's a byproduct of the competition, and maybe plays are just working, but. Um, I feel like we're a better team than Notre Dame. 
And, um, you know, Notre Dame just ran them out of the, out of, uh, uh, out of the stadium. I mean, but we all kind of felt like, okay, it's just a matter of time before Clemson got exposed, and they did. I felt like we could have been that team. And I, you know, it is what it is. I felt like we could have won all three of those games. Clemson, Wake Forest, NC State. Um, Nine and three is doable. I think, I, you know, I said way back in August, nine and three after the, uh, you know, Duquesne game, I said that would be a dream year. And that is possible. Um, you know, you just don't know what Syracuse team is going to show up this Saturday. And uh, it, it just watching their last couple of games, if you just if you just run the football on them and be physical, that you know, you you'll beat them. And you know they their weakness plays right into our strength. Notre Dame, Clemson, uh, Pitt, they all ran the football and got physical with those guys, and and that plays right into our wheelhouse. Now, as far as the Trey Ben, I think Trey Benson is a starting running back now. I think we can we can honestly say that he's the workhorse that we've been needing for several years now. I don't think you give it back to Trey Sean Ward. I, I mean, I feel like you just give him more time to rest up. There's no need to rush him back. And when you got Trey Benson playing the way that he's playing, um, you know, if he chooses to go pro, I mean, he'd made himself a lot of money, man. Um, big guy, physical. I mean, accelerates on contact. I mean, he's got jukes. He's got nice hands. I mean, he's a complete back. Um. So it's it's again it's gonna be real interesting to see how um this thing plays out the uh the rest of the year. Um I still think that Cam McDonald is a playmaker. Uh just waiting to come out of his shell. I just I feel like when he goes to the pros, man, if he gets with a, a creative offensive guy, I think you're just going to see the the talent. I would love to see him in, like, Kansas City or Green Bay and San Francisco. You already know what Kyle Shanahan can do in San Francisco with guys. I mean, 6'4", six, six, 250, can run, can catch. I mean, come on. You know, I, I that's my prediction for him. I think out of all the guys on this roster, um, I think he has a tremendous NFL upside. I think Amari Gaynor has a tremendous upside. They're not using him right. If if Amari Gaynor, when Amari Gaynor gets to the league and he will get a chance to play in the league at six three two what two thirty five, he puts on another. 10 to 20 pounds, he can play outside linebacker in a 3-4 and be very good. His his cover skills are just good enough to play a 3-4 linebacker. He can't play a 4-3 linebacker, but 3-4, rushing the edge, he's going to be a tremendous asset. And they're just not using him right. Cause you you seen Amari Gaynor come off the edge before, and he's like, he's an excellent blitzer, and they just not using him right. So, uh, like I said many times before, a famous man once said, a lot of the answers to your problems is right on your roster, and uh, they just not using him right. So, um, and you know, I, I think even his success. Even in success, you can criticize. And, you know, if you've got playmakers on your roster, why not use them? So, um, 
I just I just hope that uh over the last three games we can do what needs to be done and we can get back on top. You know, after the Miami game and the uh in the post game press conference, a reporter asked Mike Norvell, you know, about being bowl eligible and and I like what he said. He said, you know, that's a it's nice to be bowl eligible and he get to coach, you know, this group one more for one more game, but that's not the standard is being bowl eligible. I like that. I, I like that he is not getting um you know satisfied with just six wins he he realizes the tradition and the historical you know um path that this program has has you know blazed and uh you know i i just i can't wait until we get back to the days of getting you know just crazy talent you know, in those days, you know, are not too far gone. Um, but it's just we we all know what Florida State can be when it's when it's rolling. And um I just can't wait to see it. I, I think this team feels like the the team before the twelve and two team. So that two, I want to say that 2011 team, that's what this team feels like. It feels like, okay, we're going to get some guys this off season, and then we're going to go. We probably won't go undefeated, but we might lose one or two games. And then that following year is when it's going to take off. And, um. Uh, like like 2012 and two, 2012 we went 12 and two and then you know 2013 we went undefeated won the national championship that's what it feels like and uh you know we we've got to get back to dominating the a to uh ACC we've got that's the first thing we got to do and I like the fact that the ACC has gone to this format where the two best teams play for the conference championship and they've done away with the divisions because I didn't feel like the divisions were properly geographically set up anyway. <clears throat> you know, I, I felt like first of all, it should have been the ACC North and the ACC South, not coastal and Atlantic like coast i mean coastal and atlantic is like this this it's the same thing <laughs> the the coast is the atlantic so i i never understood that and um i i i feel like um you know we can be one of the top teams next season um obviously this year is probably going to be clemson and north carolina um you know, Drake May is just another, it's just a different kind of animal, man. Um, so, uh, you know, kudos to to uh, Mac Brown. But um, Florida State, I feel like on offense, I, I, I think we need a, an, ex I think... Man, it's just I don't want to disrespect none of the wide receivers that's currently on the roster, but I feel like we need a a big time playmaker on at the wide receiver position. I don't feel like we have that. Um, I feel like we need better offensive line play defensively. I think we could improve at every level, um, but more importantly, I think we need just a a more consistent scheme that works consistently. And I think that we can, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, special teams, special teams was outstanding in that Miami game. Now, I'm going to give them credit. Um, and just better um, offensive and defensive uh, 
consistency as far as play calling. And then I think if we can do those things, I think AC an, an, an ACC championship and or national championship can can be, you know, in our uh, in our grasp. So uh, hopefully over these over these last three games, we can win them all. You know, get recruits, get transfers, and and get back into the uh, the uh, limelight. So, with that being said, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It's available on YouTube. It's available on all podcast platforms. And as always, go knows.